The oppositional relationship between the Daily Administration and the Black community in Chicago was solidified by the Daily Machine's participation in the undermining of the Black Panther Party and the assassination of its leader, Fred Hampton. The Daily Political Machine took power in Chicago with the 1955 election of Richard J. Daly as mayor of Chicago. Throughout his tenure as mayor, Daly maintained segregation of black communities and supported policies that ensured black communities would continue to be impoverished and under-resourced. Specifically, he supported policies such as employment discrimination, restrictive housing covenants, double-shift schools, and construction of highways that decimated resources in the black community and maintained segregation from the rest of the city. Daly enforced these policies by controlling aldermen and other political representatives, coercing voters, especially black voters, through threats of violence and withholding of social services, and ordering brutal murders of any anti-machine candidates who supported policies opposed by Daly. Evidently, the black community in Chicago felt oppressed by Daly and sought political power outside of organized politics. The Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party was formed in response to the black community's need to defend itself against state-sanctioned oppression and violence. Chaired by Fred Hampton, the Illinois Black Panther Party differed from other civil rights organizations of the time by advocating for blacks to fight back in self-defense rather than maintain solely nonviolent resistance. However, the Illinois Black Panther Party stood for much more than just militants. The Illinois Black Panther Party organized what it called survival programs. These included such community initiatives as free breakfast for children in schools, free community health centers, and other free social services to community members. This is one famous legacy of the Black Panther Party, as the success of their survival programs forced local governments to begin providing these services to community members in an attempt to lessen the Panthers' impact on community services and organizing. Another significant legacy of the Illinois Black Panther Party is the Rainbow Coalition. Panthers formed connections and allegiances with several groups and gangs around Chicago representing a racially and ethnically diverse cross-section of Chicagoans who aligned around class struggle and progressive values. As a result of the Black Panther Party's success in revolutionizing Chicagoans, both the FBI and the Chicago Police Department gathered intelligence on the Panthers, attempt to sabotage their efforts and incite violence, and ultimately plotted and carried out a raid to kill the Illinois Black Panther Party's leader, Fred Hampton. In the December 4, 1969 raid, Chicago police officers armed with a machine gun, semi-automatic rifles, and other weapons fired 99 shots into the apartment of Fred Hampton, where he and several other Panthers were sleeping. The only shot fired by a Panther was fired by Mark Clark, who was instantly shot in the heart and fired back as a reflex as he died. Hampton had been sedated earlier in the night and did not awake as the gunfire through his bedroom door began. His pregnant girlfriend climbed over his unconscious body to save herself and her baby. After the gunfire died down, one officer entered Fred Hampton's bedroom and shot him twice in the head at point-blank range to kill him. The seven surviving Panthers in the apartment were arrested and charged with various crimes. The tactics, policies, and blatant racism of the daily political machine established an oppositional relationship with the black community in Chicago long before the assassination of Fred Hampton. However, Hampton's status as a political martyr for the revolution solidified black community distrust of Daly in particular and politicians in general. The Illinois Black Panther Party disbanded in 1972 and the national chapter closed in 1982. Although remnants of the Rainbow Coalition remain in Chicago, they have also been commodified and integrated into mainstream politics. Additionally, black voter turnout remains low in Chicago especially for local elections. For example, in the 2018 midterm elections, citywide voter turnout was 56%, 
but voter turnout in many west and south side neighborhoods was closer to 40 percent. This is another possible remnant of black distrust of Chicago politicians. Ultimately, the daily political machine had already opposed the black community in Chicago for decades before the creation of the Illinois Black Panther Party. However, Daly's participation in the destruction of the party and killing of its leader solidified the opposition between the Daly administration and the black community in Chicago, a tension that remains to this day. <laughs>